Hi, I'm William Wazi from the British Blacklist, and today I'm joined by the director of Big George Foreman, Big George himself, <laughs> George Tillman Jr. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm not too bad, man. How's this press tour treating you? Does it feel like you've gone 12 rounds with George Foreman himself? Are you still fresh-faced? Oh, man, I'm still there. You know, it was so great, man. I just finished the movie like two weeks ago. Like, so it's so great to finally be in the bubble and finishing the movie and talking about the movie because it's so amazing, George's story. And I'm just proud to be the one to, to be behind the director's chair to tell this story. When, when it comes to amazing stories and like the way that you, you have a certain delicacy and sensitivity of handling them, like I'm thinking of like when you did The Hate You Give, um, the author Angie Thomas spoke about how you don't only have respect for the source material, but you have respect for the source itself. How did you go about respecting George's legacy, but also making a difficult decision about what to leave out because his life is just so rich? Yeah. Major first thing was having that first sit down with him, you know, go, go, going flying to Houston. And then l let me see where you were born. Let me see where you lived and driving around the Fifth Ward hearing his story. Those were the first things where I was able to get in connect with him and understanding the sense of looking for approval from everywhere else, from championship belt, from Olympics to, to the loss. And then when you lose, you got nowhere to go but find that approval within yourself or some sense of spirituality is respecting. And I think that the time spent with him and the first thing is tell me things that I don't know. And those were the things that we were able to put into the film that I respect by having George being available to us. The, the validation that you speak of that he was trying to seek in the gold medals and uh, I guess the praise from his community and the wider America as a whole in the world. I think back to when you were speaking about your earlier films and how the first one didn't do that amazing and then obviously everything started to change after that and then it was sort of a numbers game, you know, um, based in success off of how big a film performed in the box office and now you've transcended beyond the, that space. And what are you looking for? What does success mean to you now? How do you seek validation within yourself or those around you? Yeah, I look at all the films that I have done, you know, and, and I remember that first film and I was like, Wow, man, it didn't, it didn't, you know, the audience at that time to get a chance to see it. So it got me mm -hmm. to go back and say, let me tell my stories that's important to me. And that's when Soul Food was that importance. And I feel like today is that you got to tell stories that can affect me emotionally and how it affects an audience. For me, George's story of a man who no one believed that he could do anything at an early age to win the Olympics. And then I saw that he at 46 said he's going to win a championship belt, and everybody laughed at him because, his, because of his stomach, because he had the weight, because he was slow. He never doubted himself. Those are the emotional things that affect me that I think that it may affect an audience. How do they take away? What's the universality to it? And that's what I try to tell as a story that changed when I was young to changing now, you know. And tapping into the stories of, of boxing itself, um, boxing is like perceived as a hyper-masculine sport charged with rage and aggression. I feel like you did an amazing job of capturing that, but without overstepping, I also feel like you did an even better job of capturing the um, the women in his life, his mother, his wife, and I've heard you speak of your own wife, Marcia, before, um, and how conscious you are for like, her as a good luck charm. So I want to know why you felt the need to put that in the film and that aspect. Yeah, that was very important. I love that. Oh, thank you. That was very important because the first thing George talked about his relationship with his mom. He was very uh, important. And I remember when he, when he first saw that moment of when his mom says, you got more inside you than you think you know. That is a key thing, especially for any African-American or any people of color or women to hear that. Because the first thing you hear is that you're not going to make it. You know, that's the first thing you grow up and you hear, if you hear it out in public or somewhere. Um, and that was the moment he got his belief. And then he found it later on with his wife, you know. He messed up the first one, you know, but he apologized and then the second one came along. These are strong women, strong um, um, women characters in his life and I felt it was very important to have that. I just really have a problem sometimes when you see a film and you see these characters like that, and they just go, you know what I mean? Quick and fast. And I felt that it was very important um, to have these things because it was important in George's life.
Thank you for doing that. And I appreciate you so much, brother. And I can't wait for everyone to appreciate George the same way that we all do because of what you've done to his legacy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.